presenter, Naomi. Well, hello. Hello to Watch Moths in September. And it's really nice to see you all. And this evening, we've got a action packed and pretty fast, speedy sort of show for you all. Um, for those of you that are new, I'll just sort of say what we are. M Watch Moths is our monthly broadcast of the project called Moths to a Flame. And Moths to a Flame is a, a project which is uh, delivered to you by the Art and Energy Collective. Myself and Chloe and Jenny and Kat are all part of that collective, uh, but it's made up of a mixture of uh, artists and technicians and scientists and moth experts and people who want to work together and be creative, imaginative and produce work that is addressing the climate emergency. Um, Moth to a Flame is on its way to COP26, and that's only two months away. And we're getting uh, excited as well as, uh, well, I don't know what the word is really, pretty, we're working really hard day to day in building up all these moths that we're uh, collecting as part of the installation. And uh, it's getting close and we need to keep up the momentum. Now, we're working in partnership with Plymouth Energy Community, and we're grateful to them, and we're also grateful for funding from the Arts Council and also from a crowdfunder we did at the beginning. So without any of that, we wouldn't be putting on this show and we wouldn't be doing Moths to a Flame. And again, for those that are not sure, Moths to a Flame is a great big uh, mass massive art installation that is going to be displayed at the botanics in the botanic gardens in Glasgow during COP26 and alongside it there's going to be an audio soundscape of people's poems and podcasts and discussions and wishes for the future or, or what we're calling whispers because a, a group of moths is called a whisper and again individually Perhaps we may not be able to achieve much, but together we can achieve a lot more. And it's especially important to tell our world leaders that during COP26. So we're using moths as a metaphor, a metaphor for our relationship with energy, moths to a flame. And we're interested in uh, exploring the natural world and looking at how those moths are behaving. And we're also thinking about energy and all its possibilities and how we behave. So we're, we're, we're sometimes we do compare how the moths behave and how humans behave in relation to energy. Uh, right, tonight then, we're gonna be, in addition to our normal uh, mothers, we're going to be seeing a bit more about and, and hearing a bit more about the UK tour. So, Moths to a Flame is touring across the UK and stopping off in all sorts of places. So um, we've got people from three or four places and they'll be telling us what they're doing to join in. And then we also have other people who are looking for moths and finding moths in, a, in their gardens and showing us those. I, th I think actually, Jenny, it's time for me to say hello to them and stop waffling. So. Let's say hello to Tim Kay, who is our presenter in Herefordshire. Tim, hello. Hello. Yeah, well, I'm delighted to be here. Um, I don't know if you can hear, I've actually got owls hooting in the background here. Um, yeah. This isn't actually my home. Um, it's about a mile away from my home in deepest, darkest Herefordshire. My parents have got a, a holiday cottage in there. Uh, I said, oh, what a perfect opportunity to put the moth trap on. And you, yeah. And it is, Tim, and I'm just going to stop you there because I know you're on first, but I'm also going to say hello to the other presenters quickly. Oh, right. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So, hello I'm going to... into my spiel then. Like, no, no, sorry. but you can come back to it. It'll be all right. <laughs> we now know where you are. That's lovely. Um, we go on to Simon and Mike in Exeter. Hello, Simon. Woo! Nice to be here. It's a real to be at the home of Mike and Biddy Walton. Yeah. Behind Exeter Cycling Campaign, these yeah. guys 
are doing something practical for climate action. Yeah, great. Thank so, you. Thank you, Mike and Biddy. And now we move on to John Walters. John is somewhere there in among our... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Hello. Thank nice you. to see you, John. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to hearing what you've been looking at over the last month and what you saw last night. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, OK. Cheers. I'll show that tomorrow, I presume, in my yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, then we go on to Jackie, who's in Cheltenham and has been uh, doing an amazing amount of volunteering with moths. Hello, Jackie. Hello, nice to see you. Um, yeah, and we'll see you more later, thank you. And then we move on to uh, Jenny Lester from Glasgow or Scotland, not actually in Glasgow, Jenny, but hello. Edinburgh, Jenny. sorry, that's a big faux pas. Um, oh, yeah. Hi, joining you from Edinburgh. <laughs> Really nice to see you from Edinburgh and uh, looking forward to hearing about Play Scotland later. And then we have we have Tora and Elia and one or two others from the Oldham Youth Council. Hello. Those of you that can unmute yourself to say hello. Hi. Hello, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you guys too. Yeah. And then Bill from Hockerton Housing in Nottingham. Hello, Bill. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and um, looking forward to hearing more about the Hogton Housing Project too. And then, of course, there's Jenny and Chloe. So um, that's all of us. And so quite a lot of us tonight. Um, right now it's going back to Tim. Sorry, Tim. We know you're in your parents' house. Well, and, and the owls are hooting. Yeah, well, my parent, the parents' a holiday cottage, which is literally yeah. just... Uh, uh, yeah, it's only about a mile away, if that really. And um, it's such a fantastic uh, environment. They, it's a working farm and they manage it very sensitively. Um, they've got some cr incredible traditional meadows, lovely hedgerows. They've got glowworms on site. And uh, I've just sort of thought, oh, I'll set the trap up here instead of my garden. Yeah. Um, now, I've got my usual uh, setup, which is my Skinner trap. I won't actually show you because it's so, so bright. Of course, it's 125 watt mercury vapor bulb i think it might just uh, blind you all um as it would do um when you're actually here in the flesh as well um mm -hmm. so uh, of course any other moth would be thinking why haven't you got a robinson trap it's because i'm too poor to afford one um but this is all this is great you can actually catch lots of moths with this trap um of course no one knows why moths are attracted to light but um they'll come in tonight it's a nice still night this is what you need nice still conditions fairly warm and what I'm actually hoping for is to uh, catch a Clifton non pareil, which is it's the blue underwing. Um, that'd be really nice to get. However, I'm not one of these people that has to have the rarities. The whole point of recording really is to is to get the whole suite of things, whether it's common or rare, and just record it all. Um, only by that can you actually actually see sort of changes in our biodiversity. Um, we know that in the past, you know, sort of 50 years, we've lost a number of, uh, a lot of the uh, sort of breadth of uh, our macro moths, you know, things like garden tiger aren't as common as they used to be. But equally, we've got these um, things coming in off the continent. Now we see, you know, lots of new things coming coming in. It's actually not a great thing, really, because it's just showing you this uh, uh, a warming world, really. So... Um, we're the barometers really of what's going on with the climate, I suppose, by looking at moths and um, cataloging them. Um, so regular recording is a really good way of just showing you and showing the politicians out there really, um, you know, the actual evidence really. So, because uh, um, we are nothing without our connection to nature. I'm sure most people are aware of the concept of biophilia where we are intuitively linked to all living things. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm I'm here, I'm here. I'm I'm. It's just got it set up, and um, it's slowly attracting lots of flies. I was here uh, last week, and I was snorting flies practically. Uh, <laughs> as, an, as anyone um, who was set down moth trapping, uh, I had a couple of people join me, and they were snorting, snorting flies as well. It was very, it's a very attractive thing. Mm. Um, you also get a lot of uh, crane flies as well around this time of year. Um, so that's that's nice, but uh, and people then move on from moths to crane flies, um, crazy as they are. Um, 
but we'll see what happens tonight because uh, we can just that's a good thing about moth trapping you don't have to uh do much effort you just put it on it's not like bat work where you have to stand around in the freezing cold all all the time uh at two o'clock in the morning as uh, a lot of other ecologists will know um you just switch the light on and go and um sit down and have a glass of red wine it's uh, it's lovely i hope i hope that's what you're going to do next tim but i know that you are a recorder and you are running something called Hidden Herefordshire, which is all about encouraging people to make a record of the biodiversity in your county to, to help people be more aware of the changes that are going on. Yeah, that's that's right. We've got this um, Heritage Lottery funded um, project, which Herefordshire has been chronically underrecorded for many years, and partly due really because it's got hardly any people in it. Um, and often recording is a reflection of uh, human population rather than actual things that are around um, so I'm just really trying to get encourage people to take up the baton and record all this stuff whether or not it's simply just a you know a tawny owl they can hear note it down uh, to the more obscure stuff like you know pseudo scorpions and uh, springtails and, and terrestrial flatworms and all the rest of it so it's really trying to encourage people at a very low level you know just to say oh i saw a bullfinch today well that's that's worth recording send the records in um because if we don't know what's out there we you know you've got a development work 